welcome to the March 29th edition of West Madness Week. I'm Kenzie Jordan, and we have a very special episode for you today. We are at the 2024 Royal Manitoba Winter Fair. This is the 115th running of the fair. The Royal had a two-year hiatus due to the pandemic. But in the last three years, the fair has bounced back and is providing excitement and entertainment for all fair goers. And as is tradition, it all kicked off with the sunrise breakfast. Our reporter, Ratika Thacker, picks up the story. Hi, I'm Ritika Thakur, and right now I'm standing in front of the dome building where the sunrise breakfast just kicked off the Royal Manitoba Fair 2024. The crowd gathered at dawn for the breakfast inside the historic dome building. More than 400 people creating a cheerful and lively atmosphere. The crowd caused some long lines, but nobody seemed to mind waiting. This has been one of the largest crowds for the kickoff breakfast that we've seen to date. So it's amazing the support that we're seeing and hopefully it continues through the week. Most seemed very excited about tasting the bacon and eggs, the typical favorite here. It was very nice. I enjoyed the bacon and sausage and eggs. It was all, all quite nice, yes. Bacon, eggs, sausage. Um, it was delicious. Meanwhile, the kids seemed absolutely mesmerized by Pikachu and Doodles the Clown, also eager to get selfies with them. The breakfast continued until 10.30. The organizers here say it was a perfect start to Manitoba's most popular event. It's just a great community experience where everybody comes out and enjoys the week while the kids are off school, come out and enjoy the fair. And it also it brings so many people from out of town, out of province. For Westman This Week, I'm Ritika Thakur. Bring on all the pretty horses. It's on the backs of those mighty beasts that the riders here are showing their stuff. None more than trick riders. With a closer look at those daredevils on horseback, here's Hayden Granger. The horses are fast, the riders seem fearless. This is one of the performers. Her name is Jordana Whites. She's getting ready for the next show, cleaning and saddling her horse. It's exhilarating. It's like the adrenaline rush is unreal. Like there's nothing else that compares. It's a big and potentially dangerous animal, but she's not nervous. The Truco Trick Riders are mostly an extended family, including five riders, five parents, and a crew of siblings. I started trick riding two years ago, but I have been riding horses my entire life. Jordana's mom said her daughter has always had the right stuff to be a trick rider. She just has always loved it. She, we own a ranch and we use horses uh, to chase the cows. Uh, she was never riding correctly. She always wanted to stand or sit backwards or just not right, ride quite correctly. And uh, so she kind of found the sport herself and fell in love with it. The trick riders do a pre-show for the public. This is where people can check out the horses and talk with the performers. Fans are of all types. I think it's pretty cool, all the horses, they all look different, and they're all different sizes. Yo, it's lit, but it smells so bad. Jordana White once had a horse collapse on her. She didn't get hurt, but she says it's a sign of how dangerous things can get. But she and the other riders say the risk is what makes it worthwhile. I would definitely say you want to have a background with horses, like you want to know what a horse thinks and how it would react to something. Your last chance to see the Truco Trick Riders is at 7 p.m. on Friday. We'll promise they'll be back next year. From the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair and Westman This Week, I'm Hayden Granger. Back to you. In addition to the magic shows, there's a variety of other children's entertainers on site. There's so much, it's so hard to pick and choose. Daniel Alamater had a chance to sample some of the fun. I'm here at the Royal Mandoba Winter Fair at Skiso Centre, where there are a lot of activities, fun and games. So I'm going to be asking the children what part of the Winter Fair did they, what part of games did they like to do the most? 
I enjoyed going and walking around looking at the map, well, at what the shops had. This is where the children get entertained by the juggling magic of Jordan. Juggling is a skill that combines hand-eye coordination, timing and talent, and where performed with a touch of magic, it can truly captivate audiences. Children are often fascinated by color and visually stimulating performances. Jordan Juggling Art Code incorporates brightly colored balls, rings, or even objects like scarves or glow in the dark props. Jordan juggling ability itself can be highly entertaining for children. Watching us skillfully manipulate multiple objects in the air with precision and flair can inspire astonishment and admiration. Another activity children like is the water balls. It was fun listening to all the children about what they like to do most here. For West Mando Suite, I'm Daniel Luadari. Back to you. The Royal isn't just about horses and cattle. Our canine companions are a fixture at the fair. Annika Olsen got a chance to meet with the wolf jocks. I am standing here at the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair where the Wolf Jocks Canine All-Star Show has been taking place. These dogs have been amazing the audience here with their ability and agility and every day they've been putting on awesome shows. The dogs perform a series of stunts including races through an obstacle course. Their energy is incredible, crowds roar approval and the dogs seem to enjoy it. The Wolf Jocks are based out of Ontario. The group has performed here at the fair since 2019, and the dogs are of all sizes and breeds. The trainers say that the dogs are actually all family dogs. Their trainers use positive reinforcement to encourage the dogs to perform choreographed stunts. This is personally one of my favorite events to take place here at the Winter Fair, and judging by crowd size, the fans here love it too. From Westman This Week, I'm Annika Olson. Back to you. One of the big draws for families to the Royal is the petting zoo. This is the best place to see all the animals you love. Our Felicia Pringle has the details. This is a part of the winter fair we don't always think about. A little crowded and a little stressful. And here is the antidote. The Royal Farmyard Petting Zoo. All different types of animals are in the corral, including human ones, and of course, bunnies and chickens, goats and sheep. The petting zoo is especially a great place for parents, where they can come and watch their kids enjoy themselves. Yeah, the parents get just as much as enjoyment out of it as well, and they love seeing their kids happy. Yeah, you just see a lot of smiling faces and um, I think people have been telling me that it's a hot spot to be. People just love the animals, so. And a lot of people have actually said they have just come here just for the petting zoo, so. Yeah, it's nice to see. This is as low stress as the fair gets. I like petting. Monday, Sunday. Mm. The baby bunny rabbit. Baby bunny bunny. The Farmyard Petting Zoo continues to be open all day through to Saturday. I'm Felicia Pringle, Westman This Week. There's so much entertainment here at the fair. Children of all ages have surely enjoyed the daily magic shows. With an inside look, here's Jimmy Tykro. It may not be real magic, but it can seem like it. They're called the Magician and the Muse. 
And they do more than pull a rabbit out of a hat. They perform complicated illusions that leave audience members asking, how did they do that? It was great. It was really entertaining. And my seven-year-old loved it. Magician Sean Watson was born in Brandon. The Muse, his fiancée, Charlene Monroe, together, they have over 30 years of combined experience. A crowd favorite, making the Muse appear out of an empty box. Another popular illusion, sleight of hand with a never-ending rope. And there's even some light magic. If you come see our show, uh, you'll see like illusions where I make it disappear, cut her in half, amazing illusions. And then you'll see some uh, sleight of hand magic, kind of like this. You take uh, sugar, pour the sugar in the hand, and uh, it disappears, actually reappears in, in, inside your pocket. This pocket? No, that would have been pretty good though. Yeah. I, I, I have to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet! Mission and the Muse are performing all week with three shows a day and their final performance is Saturday at 4.30. From Westman This Week, I'm Jimmy Tykrobe. With his painted face and big red nose, Doodles the Clown is always looking to put a smile on the children's faces. Ryan DeGroote has more in this unbelievable story. Here at the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair, there are tons of fun and exciting shows. One that comes around every year is Doodles the Clown. Doodles is an internationally famous clown. He usually performs all over Canada and the United States, from the stage to the screen. Now he comes from Northern Ontario to perform all week here in Brandon. Doodles brings an energy to the stage that makes the fair even more lively. With numerous shows in a day, hundreds of people of all ages are able to enjoy his theatrics. I love the Royal Winter Fair here in Brandon. I love all the amazing families that come out to our shows. Uh, the love that we get here, it just makes me want to work even harder. And uh, it's just such a great event. There's so much to do. I mean, it's, it's nonstop. It's unbelievable. He has many different props that he uses on stage to create a good laugh. Not only is Doodles a comedian, he's also a magician. Again. This clown has become a fan favorite because of his fun tricks and great personality. And uh, I really like to get everyone participating in the show. I give out a lot of prizes. Um, it's just a fun event. I really look forward to it every year. This always makes for a production with great participation. They are unbelievable. What was your favorite part? Definitely all his cool tricks he's done for us. The part where he called the little girl um, Taylor Swift. Um, probably when my he called my brother up and he just, yeah. This machine will tell me if you're telling the truth or you're telling a fib. If you want a good laugh, make sure to check out Doodle's performance before the fair ends. Ryan DeGroote, Westman This Week. Back to you. Every year, the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair brings thousands of visitors, exhibitors, businesses, and entrepreneurs to the Wheat City. We sent our Sofia Forlova to talk to the general manager of the Provincial Exhibition of Manitoba. With Sofia, here's Mark Humphreys. Hello and welcome, I'm Sofia Forlova, and today we're at the Keystone Center at the um, Royal Manitoba Winter Fair is ongoing this week. Today joining us is Mark Humphreys, the general manager of the Provincial Exhibition of Manitoba. Hello, Mark. Thank you for having me. How do you feel about the fair this year? How's it uh, going? It's going really well, yeah. Numbers are up and people are coming through the door. Everybody's happy. Doodles is here, Wompkins here, Fred Penn is here. You already mentioned the numbers. What are the numbers we're looking at today? Well, we've got nothing specific yet, so we're still trying to do the stats, but over the uh, last few years, we're getting better and more accurate with our friends at Authenticate to calculate numbers at the door. Helps all our economic uh, driving and um, obviously shows where uh, we are financially. But yeah, up to, up to now from last year, 
We're up about a thousand people a day, so that's really healthy. How about the numbers of visitor um, numbers of businesses involved this year? From uh, for the trade show, for instance, there are probably over 140 exhibits, uh, and then with sponsors alone, probably in excess of a couple of hundred sponsors. So it's uh, it's a big portfolio to handle. And how about the participants of the show? Yeah, those are up as well. The, ho the horse competitors. Uh, we've had an increase in those again this year. So following COVID, you know, following those um, hard years of that, people are now bringing themselves back out, getting themselves back with fairs. So it's all, all positive stuff. We're talking about the um, pandemic. Are we getting any closer to pre-pandemic numbers? How the situation changed since COVID? It is getting closer. Um, well, I don't think we'll be fully up there for another couple of years yet. I think people are still obviously watching the pocket. The, uh, the cost of living is high. Um, so the grocery basket is very expensive. People are, are choosing what they spend, um, but it is on the rise. So we are seeing a healthy increase in fares at the minute anyway, but uh, you know, across the economy is hard. So it'll be a slow rise. Yeah, but we're anyways getting there, but right? We're getting there, All right. slow but positively sure, yeah. So you have been a general manager of the provincial exhibition for a couple of years. So yes. what is special and different about this particular fair and this year? So for Manitoba and the prairies, it's extremely precious to have. Uh, you know, if there's two in the country from coast to coast to coast, it's, it's a good achievement. Um, so next year will be our 55th, uh, which is a good banner year for us. So yeah, it's, it brings people to town. We're trying to connect um, the city with rural. So obviously educate along we go what farming is all about, what uh, equestrianism is all about. So a lot of education components in there. If there are any, what are the challenges that the rectory is facing this year? Yeah, it's always a big battle to, to organize it. Um, we start literally as we move out. So the next year's planning begins the first day out of the Keystone Center. So 150 volunteers, 39 directors, nine staff. It's a small army of people to organize. Um, and of course, um, it's an ongoing project. There's so many moving parts that we never really stop. And we, we try to learn every time from each event to try and get better and try and develop. What is your vision on the fair's future? What is coming up to it? Well, we're always developing, we're always trying to modernize, we're always trying to sort of fit in with today's environment. So it's got always an uphill battle to do that. You know, everybody these days has a cell phone in the hand. Uh, technology is there amongst us all. We've got to try and compete with that and keep up with it uh, at the same time. So that's a, it's a constant battle, but uh, it's a battle that is achievable as long as our directors and uh, staff keep an open mind. It was really nice to have you here for an interview. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time. And it was Mark Humphreys for our Westman this week from the Winter Fair. Back to you. Part of the main mission of the fair is to provide agricultural awareness and education. The 4-H program plays a significant role in that education. Manitoba is the founding home of 4-H and Tuesday is dedicated to celebrating the leaders and members of clubs from all over the province. Hello, today we are at the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair and I am in the Flynn Arena where you can see miniature horses, horses and cattle and various other animals. I am in front of the 4-H booth where people of all ages, including kids, can experience how a cow gives birth to a baby calf. Let's learn more about the 4 program. The 4 program was started in the early 90s as Foursquare Education. The 4 Hs indicate head, heart and health. They promote positive youth development. The idea was to facilitate learning and engage youth in the work of their community through the cooperative extension service to enhance the quality of life. Let's ask someone about the 4 program. So 4 was started right here in Manitoba in 1913. And it is a great program for, for youth members to learn real hands-on skills, communication and leadership skills. We noticed kids coming and having fun here at the fair while learning many new things. They learn how to make fun things with filling the sock with rice. And they also experience how a baby calf was born. On the forage booth, they were giving free bags to people. There were many miniature horses, bigger horses and cows. It looked really good. We asked the youth what was their favorite thing at the fair. You know, it's just a good time and everything. I think the cows are pretty cool and the cow over there, you get to put your hand in it. Pretty awesome. There was a program 
in which they show how important is first aid for a horse before a vet arrives. We asked President of Agriculture Ron Kostoshin about the 4-H program. The 4-H organizations was set up to help uh, provide some means of uh, students or opportunities for young children to learn other appropriate skills. There is about the care of animals, there is the rodeo, the beef uh, production side of it. So it's, it's a learning skill that's provided by uh, elderly uh, individuals that are the leaders. That's all we have for now for the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair. You can come visit here. The last day of the fair is 31st March. Back to you. Let's go now to the heart of this agricultural extravaganza. We're joining the ranchers and the cattle breeders who've gathered together to showcase their finest animals. Avery Pan takes us to cattle country. Here at this area of the fair, cattle reign supreme. Breeders treat their animals like royalty. Yes, I love it. Every single day I'm out there working with her, feeding her every day. I love it. Cattle ranchers from across the region come here to showcase their best bovines. From majestic dairy cows to robust beef cattle, it's all about showing off the animals and show of the industry. This fair will impact the future, no doubt, just because it allows us to tell our story, to increase the communication to the people that don't have experience with the farm. So if we can share our stories, share our examples with, uh, with the general public, uh, that will increase our public trust in, in what we're doing in the agriculture industry and allow for us to be able to farm for many years to come. Exhibitors also show off their showmanship skills, guiding cattle around the ring to catch the judge's eyes. Price money runs from $30 up into the thousands for the first place jackpot class. But the bigger rewards are in owning and showing off the beauty of a prize winning animal. This fair is all about animals, from sheep shearing to dog chicks. The X is full of impressive animals. But here for those people, cows are number one. For Westman this week, I am Avery Pan. Back to you. It's not just about show jumping here at the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair. Brandon was at one time known as the horse capital of Western Canada. These gentle giants harken back to Manitoba's agricultural past and are a fan favorite. Dylan Meaches has the story. They come thundering in, the heavy horses pulling loads and looking fabulous. But long before they come into the arena, they need some loving care. This year at Royal Manitoba Winter Fair, we were adventuring and stumbled across some owners to Heavy Horses Show competitors. The Heavy Horses Show has been running in Brandon as a tradition since 1907 and still going after 100 years. Passed down from generation after generation, the Heavy Horses Show competition has four teams going against each other, but all remain as one big family everywhere they go. Chaz Lambert, first year to join, also mentioned how it's been since he joined last year. <laughs> well, um, at the Royal Winter Fair here, there's uh, four of us that are competing against one another um, in most of the hitch classes. Um, and what do you need to win? Well, um, I think a positive attitude, actually. <laughs> well, it takes a lot of hard work. <laughs> Getting horses ready is uh, it, it's, it's very time consuming. Um, we probably put in four hours a day strictly with our horses um, on top of our regular jobs. So, yeah, yeah. Patrick, another member of Heavy Horses Show member, also says a few words about being in this industry. We chose this show um, just because it's, it's close to home and it's nice to see a big show like this still happening in Manitoba and just to support the, the industry. So yeah, and we do travel around. We'll do uh, part of the milk run this summer and Austin Threshermans and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, showing is certainly great. It's We get to bring our family along. We get to bring our friends along. It's, it's nice for the horses to get them out on the road and uh, it's for the love of the horses. So we get to enjoy what we're doing. 
Yeah, I've met a lot of the competition in the same places. Uh, Manitoba is a pretty close-knit group of people in the heavy horse world. We're all kind of like a big family. Um, and what it takes to beat them, I don't know. It's, it's all about working together and, and being the best you can to your animals. For Westman this week at Royal Manitoba Winter Fair, I'm Dylan Meaches. One of the long-standing traditions at the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair are the Hackney Pleasure Pony classes. These high steppers are a delight to drive and fun to watch. Liam Haslin has more. When it comes to show animals, Hackney ponies are the cream of the crop. Here at the Winter Fair, a couple of ranchers have an opportunity to show theirs off, including the Mennies, who have brought their Hackneys to compete in the competition. My family started showing here in 1956 before the Keystone was ever built so it's a family tradition that I'm going to try to keep going as long as I can as long as we can uh, keep some ponies around. So Dallas was kind enough to show us around and tell us a little bit about the history of this particular breed. Well, the Hackney Pony originated in England uh, through breeding of um, mine ponies and Shetland ponies and they derived a breed that had a lot of action and style and it uh, turned into be kind of a gentleman's pony or a lady's pony that they would drive around in their fancy carriage in the streets. Lloyd Many, Dallas's father, competed in the competition later in the afternoon, riding just behind his fancy steed in an equally fancy carriage. The excitement of, of driving them, they're, they're very exciting to drive and uh, they're perky, they love the crowd, they love all the noise that goes on and, and they're just an exciting horse to show. Lloyd went on to win the pony show in first place, taking home his nice and shiny ribbon. For Westman This Week, I'm Liam Haslin. One unique aspect of this 2024 edition of the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair is that the equestrian events are being live streamed. One of the keys to this level of production for the show is the involvement of the media and communication students from Assiniboian Community College. It's hands-on learning at its best and Elizabeth Caballero takes us behind the scenes. It's the first day of the Winter Fair. ACC media students are scattered around all over the building doing all sorts of stuff. These students are working the radio shift. They're in charge of promoting the ACC campus radio station called CJ106. For them, the fair makes learning a little bit more fun. As a media student, it feels making story outside the campus. It feels good in this type of big events. You know, you shooting, interviewing people. It's all fun. Other students are working the cameras on the live event in the main arena, hosting all sorts of shows like horse jumping, dog shows, horse carriages, and much more. The footage airs on a jump drone and on the fair's live feed. That's partly why the fair's president says the students are a major asset to the event. Share the facility we've got and you guys can benefit from it. Um, why aren't we using that and capitalizing it and growing it? This is the first time this show has ever gone worldwide and been streamed, and that's down to ACC being here making that possible. We couldn't have done that without you guys. All the audio and video gets run through this control room. The production team is directed by Katrina, a second year media student. The ACC instructors here say the fair is a perfect learning lab. We're shooting stories, we're doing radio, we're doing live production, we're live streaming. There's all kinds of activities and coming to a large event and navigating this while you're still at school is an awesome way to learn. The ACC media students will continue working at the fair for the rest of the week, producing fun stories and interacting with the community. For Westman This Week, I'm Elizabeth Caballero. That's all for us here, but the fair still has one more day left. It's been a fantastic week and we've really enjoyed bringing you these stories. From all of us in media and communications at Assiniboine Community College, and in particular, our intrepid videographer, Connor Ramsey, I'm Kenzie Jordan. Thanks for watching, and see you next year at the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair.